Hello, this is Paul Cini with Spartan Design University. Let's take a look at the use of an article tag, and we're going to flesh out the content of the um, page. Notice that I've got this problem over here with the paragraph. There's no space. I'm, I'm ignoring the 2% that I've got here in my header and here. I've got a 2% here, but I don't have here. So let's, let's kind of flesh out this, and then we'll talk more about styling once we get the content in. So we're going to jump back to Dreamweaver. Here is the paragraph that's already there and the figure that's floated to the right of it. Let's give ourselves some more working room down here. And we're going to insert an article. That's a new HTML5 tag. And then we'll close that article. We're going to lead this article off with a heading 2 that says news. Nice thing about Dreamweaver is you do Command 2 or Option 2 on a PC. And then we're going to put in um, a couple of subheadings. So under News, maybe we have maybe that's one article news item. Oh boy, I can't talk and type at the same time. All right, so there's a couple of sub items under news. So we'll categorize as heading threes. And then I'm not going to waste time typing those news articles. I'll come over here to my browser. Chrome has this really neat thing called a filler text from Lorem Lipson Generator. I'll grab a couple of paragraphs out of here, copy them. Drop one of them into there. Oops. Put one of them in there. And then I'm going to tag this with a paragraph. This one with a paragraph. OK. So those are the two news items that live inside this article. We're going to have a second article, which is going to look almost the same. So I'm just going to copy this. Come down here. This second one, though, is going to be a feed from our Twitter account. So it'll be tweets. Maybe the first tweet is number two to wrap images in a figure tag. Probably not a very interesting tweet. And it's going to be a little bit shorter. And then my second tweet might be a reminder to use the fig caption, which is going to be even shorter. All right. So let's take a look at that. Hit refresh. And there are the two articles. Now, styling. We want to take these news and tweets and style them so that they kind of have some color and some some stuff to them. We're going to start off our styling with our phone dash default. And we're going to style the article itself. So we'll do pound content article. And we'll do a margin of nothing on the top and bottom and 2% on the left and right. Let's see what that does. Kicks those over beautifully. This one doesn't follow any directions because it doesn't live in an article tag, which it should. So let's come back to our source code. And let's put all of our content blocks in articles. So here's our header, h1. We'll begin it with an article. And notice that Dreamweaver remembers that when I close this, it should be a closing article tag, because it knows that that's the next thing that's missing, which is really nice. 
So we wrap the figure and that in an article tag. Let's see what we get. Kicks that in nicely, but notice over here now, we have a 4% margin in a, instead of a 2% margin. This is beautiful too. This is double that. So we need to go back to our CSS to where we have our image. Content images. We have a margin on the W33 on both sides, left and right of 2%. So this is top and bottom. This is left and right. Well, we need to add a, instead of a two value, we need to do a four value. So we'll repeat the top and bottom, and then 2% on the left. So top is correct. Right side now becomes zero because the article has the padding. Bottom is still 0.3, and now left pushes it away from the text. Let's see what that does. So there we've got a nice 2% there, 2% there, everything's in a row. We've got a little bit more styling that we want to show to this, and we'll take care of that in also the phone default. Okay, so here we are. We've got our content article that sort of maps out the basic stuff. And now we're going to start by talking to these two articles here. Now, remember from our design, those two articles are supposed to eventually float side by side when we get to the tablet. Or sorry, when we get to the desktop. The tablet, they're stacked, and the phone, they're stacked. And notice they have a solid background here and then the text is a little bit smaller. So let's start by tagging those with their own class. We'll go back to the source code. Inside the first one, we'll do article class equals, and because this is the news, we'll do it news, make it nice and easy. Come down here to this one, class equals, and this will be tweet. So now that we've tagged those, we can go into our CSS and we can throw some background colors and stuff at them. Let's go over here. We've got pound content article dot news comma. So there's one. Here's the second content article dot tweet. There it is. So we're going to talk to those two items, and we'll start by setting the background color to kind of a really light gray. And then we'll set a margin at the top of an, one half an EM. And then we'll do one at the bottom, which is the same. So what we could really do is just change this to margin. This is top and bottom. This is left and right. That would be kind of a shorthand version. All right, let's check and see if that's working. And it is. Now, the reason we can't use the shorthand version of that is because it overrides this here. So we have to go back to the margin dash top. So margin top, margin bottom, save that, Let's see if that brings that back, and there's that gap there, and there's a little gap there. So that's working. Now let's talk to the H2s, which is the news and the tweets. This stuff is probably you're very familiar with, so I'm just going to drop the code in here. Article.news heading to and article.tweet heading to. So it's going to talk to both of those. Set the color to white, change the font size, change the padding a little bit, hit refresh. Okay, so there's the news, there's the tweets. Now what we want to do is put a blue color from our theme, which is this color here, 
behind the news, and I want to put the pink color behind the tweets. So I'm going to make two separate calls instead of making a combined call. So we're going to talk to the H2 in the news and the H2 in the tweets. And there's the pink color and the blue color. I'm not sure which is which, but let's check over here. And there we've got a nice solid bar, solid border. So this is what we've got. Remember, we're, we're working on the phone right now. Now, those are H2s. They look great. Now we've got some H3s here, which still look pretty bad. We're going to do almost exactly the same thing with the H3s as we did with the H2s. So I'm going to put a block of code in here. So now we're talking to the H3 inside the news, the H3 inside the tweet. Here's a color. Here's a font size. Actually, we don't need that color. Okay, here's a font size, and there's some padding. Here, we're going to assign the color that matches the background color. So this is the two blues, and this is the two pinks. Save it. Now I've got this blue matching that blue, and this pink matching that pink. Notice that this statement right here, my padding on the H3, the H3 being this and this, I've brought it down from the top 0.5. That gives me this little gap. I have nothing at the right, nothing at the bottom, and the left is brought in 1% from the edge of the gray box. So there's a gap right there between there and the edge. 1%. Now I want to bring my paragraphs in similarly 1% and shrink the font. This is just too big. So now we're going to talk to the P in both of those. And that's a simple statement. I'm going to drop it in right here. So we're talking to the paragraph in the news article and the paragraphs in the tweet article. We're changing the color to be a light gray or sort of a medium gray. We're changing the font size a little bit smaller, padding on the left side and on the right side to bring it in because we've got some places here that are really, really close, like that EU dot. And that dot. So we're going to bring those in and we're going to expand the line height. This is something I do a lot just to make web pages a little bit easier to read, especially when you start using Google Fonts. So we'll save that with those changes. Now you can see them the smaller font size and the lighter color. So that's looking pretty good for my phone and my tablet. Now we're going to tackle the desktop where we have to put these two side by side.